Here we go. <laughs> it's the sound. <laughs> it's the magical sound, which means that we're about to play Broken Phone. Today we've got Alex, Chaz, Dan, Emil, Emmy, Haley, Mal, Paul, Thomas, and myself. And we've created, I'm going to say magic, I hope. Yeah, that's, we've, that's the we've, word yeah, for it. We've created, word. we've created friendship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The real yeah. magic was the friendship we made along the way. I mean, you well, know, it's hard to know what we've made, to be honest, because I only get only tiny. only a snippet of it. Yeah, so I guess we'll find out what we've made. Yeah, that Let's makes sense. Let's find out uh, what Emmy had us make. <laughs> I hate you! <laughs> I specifically said this was not allowed! Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm oh, sorry, this is my fault. This, this is my fault. This was the first this thing I received, fault. so this don't is my worry. Fault. Well, now Emmy has to read it, so yep. joke's on her. <laughs> Two households, both awake in dignity, in fair Verona, where we where we weigh our scene, from ancient grudge break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unqueen. Mutiny, get it? Oh, <laughs> this is a lot. Oh, I forgot that I own this. Uh, the efficient paused, then coughed up a huge hairball. I'm sorry, I just had to get that out. He proceeded with the wedding. <laughs> It rolled away like a tumbleweed. Do you, Sue, take Doug to be your waffly lod husband? She knew this moment would decide everything. I do. We kissed. The priest pronounced us married, and we rode off into the sunset to found Sue and Doug's waffle emporium and law firm. <laughs> Unfortunately, unhappy days followed us. Sue's waffles suck, and Doug's lies bad. Our Yelp review is proclaimed. Our honeymoon was a disaster. We had one possible hope left. We decided to rebrand our business as Sue's Awful Waffles and Doug's Very Bad Legal Advice. Before long, hipsters were coming from all over to enjoy our business, ironically. In turn, we sued those hipsters. We took their money, ironically. We became ironically rich. Everyone knew and feared Sue's Awful Waffles and Doug's Very Bad Legal Advice. Our faces graced every bus, bench, and billboard in the tri-state area. The DA couldn't do anything. We ran the breakfast. We, we, we ran the breakfast and accident injury settlement game. <laughs> Customers would stop in for breakfast and a consultation for their accidents. It was going great until an undercover agent came in to investigate and slipped on a pancake. Knocked unconscious, we didn't want to send him to the hospital. We hooked him up to a sur syrup IV and he awoke, crying tears of butter. This surely was crime and punishment. <laughs> <laughs> the end. Good, good chat. That was a there. roller coaster of a book. I, I really hijacked this one three messages in. It's also really hard to quickly say Sue's awful waffles and Doug's very bad legal advice. <laughs> Great business idea, though. I love yeah. it. I love it. And and Emil, I think you 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 took it in a good direction considering yeah. how it started. We got rid of the U. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was. I mean, I still had some gibberish in there and some W's, but. Yeah, that was that was yeah, the first thing good. I saw. I was like, no, I refuse. I'm not, I'm not going down this this road with you, Emmy. <laughs> Got to close that fridge. Close that fridge. Close the fridge. If you if you want more of the, the Romeo and Juliet, come watch Thomas. Oh, thank you sure. for promoting my stream, T.S. Dante on Twitch. <laughs> Very good. I guess, I guess I hope this comes out soon. Sunday is at ten. Okay. It's gonna uh, go for a while. Our next book is by Emil. Oh boy. There once was a man who wanted to redefine Let's Plays by involving potatoes and shrimp. You could smell his breath through the screen. But you needed to have the smell of GPU to get the full immersion of the LP. Even in 2069, they were hard to come by. Episode 7 of Baby Warrior 2 wouldn't be as good without one. I sighed. The smell of GPUs weren't set to come in stock until November. I decided to simulate Baby Warrior 2 smell with some household <laughs> objects. I hate this. <laughs> a few banana peels and three month old unwashed jeans were the backbone of the smell just add water I chuckled to myself the empty house replied with a resounding silence <laughs> the silence was a reminder of how lonely I was the jeans and banana peels could be my friend I stuffed the jeans with leaves from outside and set up the peels and voila I enjoyed the company of the Banana Man for many moons, but eventually all good things must come to an end, I guess. 
The banana man <laughs> knelt in front of me and handed me the knife. He sensed my hesitation and reassured me. It's okay. You've been wonderful. But now it's time. I began the incantation. <laughs> banana gods, please accept this sacrifice. I sliced off the uh, I sliced off the banana man's head off, uh, but it came off buttery smooth. You know, because he was a banana. I knew the incantation worked. When a banana-shaped car materialized in front of the altar, <laughs> victory was so close I could taste it! I would enter the big race with this car and win back all I had lost. Have a Diddy Kong Racing-themed wedding this year was the best idea, even if it meant that the winner of the race got to marry my fiancé. <laughs> this is like alternate universe Garfield Kart. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A little bit. Oh my god. Yeah, let's get back to Let's Plays at the end with Paul there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. of all the things. IRL Let's Plays. Man. It was I... funny how, like, the creative intent somehow gets through anyway. <laughs> uh, I really I really liked how Banana Man came to life, and I also like trying to smell Baby Wario, too. Um, <laughs> I like great. that I got, the, uh, I got the entirely wrong altar, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. They're kind of the same. It's fine. Uh, Good book, Camille. Thank you. Uh, looks I, like... I, I made one-tenth of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, up next is me. What another fine mess you've got us in, I grumbled to the space walrus. She smiled peacefully. She didn't care. This was exactly the sort of mess she loved oh so very much. She had his tusks stuck through her arm. After the fourth time the space walrus had done this, she got prosthetics that allowed it to happen without bleeding. Out of love. My OnlyFans got weird all of a sudden, I thought. But the stacks of cold hard cash that showed up in my bank account soothed my soul of any walrus sins. Oh, no! Wow. Besides, sins were temporary, and enough cash could wash anyone's soul clean. It was also common knowledge that walruses didn't have souls, so I figured I was in the clear. With this knowledge, I led the walrus to the red light district. Goo goo ga joob, he exclaimed. <laughs> Once I do this, the contract will be fulfilled. Vinny will have to let me go. The walrus was getting a look at all the lovely ladies when he was lured into an alley by a woman in black. Beatrix had the easy part to show him a good time, but I <laughs> had to kill him. Oh no. She flipped her blonde curls at him, and he followed her deeper into the alley. I readied my claymore, took aim at the walrus, but then I saw it. Ed, the sharpshooter we'd stationed on the nearby rooftop, wasn't there. Come to think of it, when I first met him, he was swallowing live fish whole. Could he be a walrus too? Mm -hmm. I began to question all the contacts I'd made. Come to think of it, Ted was awfully bear-shaped with long teeth and bushy fur, and when Monica walked, she just kind of slithered? <laughs> then I woke up. Boy, I shouldn't have eaten those brownies before bed. That was surely the most <laughs> fucked up version of Animal Farm. The end. <laughs> Man, I'm sorry. I didn't realize we kept walruses the entire time until me. That was wildly coherent what? in a way that I didn't expect it to be. I want this to be the new Jason Bourne movie. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it is. It's just Jason Bourne, but everyone is walruses, but he doesn't realize. He doesn't realize until like <laughs> nine tenths of the way through the film, yeah. like in the final act. He's like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hang on. What a, what a twist that would be. I, I could call it Jason Waterborn. <laughs> uh, this is a little bit like Jason Bourne meets Rich a Scary Busy Town. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yes. A little bit of that. Yes. I get a little bit of that. There, there's a lot going on there, but we do have to move on. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Paul's book. book. Everybody said it couldn't be done. Cats can't even drive a normal car, they said. And the insurance premiums. Nonetheless, I taught Fluffy how to drive a semi-truck. <laughs> oh, good. And Fluffy was amazing. No one had ever seen such driving skill. With little claws gripping the steering wheel and whiskers on alert, Fluffy got her CDL immediately. <laughs> it was time to make some cash. 
Fluffy got their first gig hauling 40 tons of litter across the country <laughs> with a Johnny Cup full of Joe, the Srig was ready to roll. Fluffy was right to worry that she would have to pee miles from civilization. <laughs> it was coming out. Would it be on the side of the road? Into the cup? Or the 40 tons of litter? <laughs> Oh no! What have I done? <laughs> oh boy! Set to this. Yep. Fluffy couldn't hold it anymore. He spread oh, God. everywhere in the car, causing them to swerve off the road. Holy fucking shit! They screamed as they ran into a tree. Uh, Dan, should it be holy fucking piss? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> Fortunately, this was a tree of a very old and strange legend. Be I coated in flame and urine, then to paradise I shall take thee. Fluffy and I teleported from the fiery BMW to our own personal paradise. It was the dining room of a golden corral, but there was also a K&W, a Piccadilly, a Sizzler. The buffet line stretched far off into the heavens. I filled my tray, but there was no way to leave the buffet line. Oh my people, god. Sorry. People continue. behind me <laughs> continued to shuffle forward, but the buffet was truly endless. Oh god, I'm trapped. <laughs> I'm so engrossed in this story. <laughs> I watched the golden corral line stretch into infinity, the dizzying parallel spiraling in front of my eyes. I shrugged and continued dishing up my plate. Nothing was out of the ordinary. Everything was finally right in the multiverse, and now I could feast. The end. <laughs> Sorry, I realized partway through your sentence that Alex said golden corral, Steven said nothing about golden corral, and then I said golden corral again. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> this, this, okay, so this book is incredible. I want to take this opportunity to just remind anyone watching that has any um, you know, skills as an animator that you are more than welcome to take any of these books and animate them. That's totally, You're totally welcome to do that. We love to see it. And uh, God, uh, this one in particular would be incredible. Maybe not Dan's line, though. <laughs> Oh. Dan's line, just just censor the whole screen. Yeah, <laughs> I leave where he ran with it. I like that they go to paradise. To go to Dan. I like they go to paradise, and then there's a twist. It's actually bad, and then no, actually, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Chaz, that's just the double twist. <laughs> God, uh, excellent. All Earth right, is what uh, you make of it, be it heaven or hell. Yeah, Stephen, you are up next. Okay. Uh... Melvin climbed up into his pickup truck, Heineken in hand. 92 miles to Phoenix, and I've got one hour. He started the truck. Let's rock and roll. His <laughs> wife looked perplexed. Melvin took a swig, started the car, and growled at her. There's just no good Afghan food in Tucson. We're going to Khyber Halal in Phoenix. <laughs> As Melvin drove furiously, his wife sat in, in patient contemplation. She knew Khyber Halal was merely a ruse, and she plotted her revenge. First, I'll demand 100 euros, she thought. That idiot husband will be distracted clandestinely cooking, and then I'll make my move. Melvin's hands drenched the wheel in sweat. <laughs> Melvin throws the wheel into a hard reverse, spinning off the road. To her surprise, he answers with a determined smile. Want some guac in them? Melvin, you know it's been my life goal, she gasped. She jumped out of the car and grabbed the empty bowl and chips from the trunk. Melvin took the bowl to the guac machine. Can you believe there's a guac machine all the way out in this swamp? She squealed. Melvin could believe it because it was a trap. <laughs> it was a trap. Oh, my God. His, his, his trap. Happen. Sorry, this is changing every single... <laughs> every every sentence is a plot twist. It's going back and forth. Around Phoenix. <laughs> you ate of the avocado. Now you shall never own a house. He ran away, <laughs> giggling fiercely. I tackled him and screamed in his face, I love avocado toast. Why are you doing this to me? I want a home. Still giggling, he calmly stated, What if the avocado toast was your home all along? He pointed behind me. There stood a perfectly toasted home of bread, smoothened in that soft, oily green stuff. 
Jesus Beautiful. Christ. <laughs> wow, that was really was, weird. Every sentence was its own plot twist. <laughs> like, like, mm, yeah, I, like everything. <laughs> we, we keep moving. <laughs> Melvin climbed into his pickup truck. He got out of his BMW. And I'm like, well, something <laughs> happened. <laughs> I, it's 92 miles to Phoenix and there's a swamp in the middle. <laughs> oh. oh my God, I have tears in my eyes. Yeah, Excellent. Of, oof, these, these have been some really good books. Yeah, these are good. We'll see if the next one is... Phone juices. <laughs> Ailey, today. you are up next. <laughs> oh, oh. Okay, okay, I, got it. I can't put it together after that last one. <laughs> Silicon, copper, aluminum, tungsten, plastic. What could possibly be missing, I thought. What are computers really made of? Do I have to go mine the minerals too, refine the oil? And why do I want one so badly? To play a game? I don't even like video games. Had capitalism done this to me? Oof. <laughs> so I unplugged my computer and dumped it down a huge fucking hole that I dug. <laughs> Guess it's all hermit's life for me. I should probably first build a latrine. That's what people forget, the latrine. That's a day one job, that is. You ain't living in a place until you can poop in peace there. That's what old Jim said. Because we didn't create a latrine. <laughs> they just had to go poop in the woods. But it wasn't peaceful because all these bears kept showing up and trying to sell them toilet paper. <laughs> Jesus. The business bears were relentless. They came prepared with graphs and PowerPoints about toilet paper efficient, effective <laughs> <laughs> Please leave us alone, the people begged. We don't want any. The bears assured them, Toilet paper is safe and effective and fun for the whole family. You millennials just don't know what's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, it was a trap. What? Once everyone started to wipe, the bears used it as a distraction. The mauling was fast <laughs> and graphic. <laughs> Too graphic to describe. The park rangers came across the scene a few days later, but it was too late. The bears were becoming smarter. The rangers had to warn the public, and fast. Soon, a fleet of drones buzzed around the park, screaming, Bear alert! and spraying park goers with wolf urine. Countless lives were saved. The bears went back to their home planet. Oh, and why is there so much urine? My favorite, my favorite part of this is the park. Ranger, the park rangers came across the scene a few days later, but it was too late. <laughs> like, yeah, you don't say. <laughs> Stephen was just getting revenge for his whole book being a plot twist. Oh God. Yes. Uh, uh, well, the moral of the story is: don't try to find out what computers are made of. <laughs> yeah, you get well, by a bear. You might have to go to ITT Tech to figure that out. <laughs> you guys are probably C students. Good book. <laughs> Mallory, you're up next. At 3 a.m., Edwin woke up suddenly to the phone ringing, an unknown number. He answered. The voice on the other end said, Edwin, it is urgent that you become a professional athlete. Click. <laughs> Edwin pulled the phone away from his face sleepily professional athlete he wondered if becoming a pro ping pong player would satisfy the mysterious benefactor groggily his hand reached under the mattress and pulled out the ping pong pro floppy disk edwin kept for such a, just such an occasion he crunched it mightily the unknown caller grinned good good chew that disk My retro <laughs> no <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and that, that was what I got. Title. I mean, where else Chew was, that where else was Chess That's going it. with this? <laughs> My retro hardware mastication fetish would be sated for today. <laughs> was cursed with this ghastly attraction by a techno witch in my youth i took a wrong turn in the back of an abandoned circuit city and came across a hut made of commodore 64s i peered into the tent and the commodore witch shrieked at me <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, <laughs> <just> belief, <laughs> that's fair. but the rhythmic sound of spring-loaded keys entranced me I peered into the eyes of the Commodore witch in that tent, and I had a longing for her. The way her gross, weird, knobby nose curled and the thighs you could cook a turkey on. Uh. She welcomed me into the tent. The cauldron bubbling in the center was big enough for two. Care to join me? She sh showed me a sexy shoulder 
And man, I was in that pot. Let me tell you, I had all of that shoulder. It was the perfect final memory before I became dinner. Yikes! I died, but I knew I was delicious. The end. Mrs. Fitzgerald closed the browser window. That's enough internet for today, she said. What the fuck just happened? I like how it came back to computers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh. Thomas, you left out uh, the Commodore part of that, witch. <laughs> well, like... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> we don't need that part by, anymore. I was more confused by the thighs that could cook a turkey on. <laughs> I saw that and just went, so this is just a sexy witch. And, you know, Commodore could be like, you know, a rank. So I'm like, She's okay. like a, in a naval oh, witch. Yeah. I see. Yeah. She's... I wasn't sure if it was a Commodore 64. And I'm like, I don't know what a Commodore 64 Thomas, witch would look like. Thomas but... is just trimming the fat. He's <laughs> just saying, we don't need that part. I just we, wanted to make it sexy. Edwin... That's all. He, for three he trimmed- pages, and then he was just gone, and we were talking about <laughs> retro hardware very suddenly. Well, we know what the people want. <laughs> uh, uh, no, I, I am wanted that. I am sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. I loved hearing Mal be unab- unable to read for 60 whole seconds. <laughs> Great. Dan, your book. Luke Skywalker gazed at the double sunset on Tatooine. He was tired of the shit. And all this sand, all this <laughs> shitty sand. He was going to make a name for himself. But first, he had to get a job. Uncle Owen had fired him after he caught, after he'd been caught huffing bantha farts. <laughs> I think we lost him. Oh, oh no. <laughs> He's still here. <laughs> okay. Um, He's screaming okay. in agony and ecstasy. <laughs> <laughs> You've been caught huffing. <laughs> yeah, this is the second one. <laughs> Do you need help? Been caught huffing bantha farts behind the Java sandcrawler, but his res- but his resume was lacking. But what job was he even allowed to do? He was banned from half the stores in the area. I'll go see Mama Oscar. She'll have a job for me. Mama Oscar was looking through receipts as he walked in the front door. As he met her gaze, he opened his arms to embrace her. She reached into a purse and clutched her pistol. Oscar laughed nervously. (laughs) She wasn't falling for his ill-intended begging for money again. She had enough of that before he was 14. She sighed and closed the (laughs) Crouch's garbage (laughs) can (laughs) for Oh my god. This is like the third time his name is changed. Oh, Oh, Emmy. Oh, wow. Perfect. She sighed and closed the the Grouch's garbage can forcibly. She rolled her eyes and continued down the street to the barbershop, accordion in hand. (sighs) Please stop playing the accordion while I'm cutting your hair, the barber replied. But she couldn't hear him over the terrible (laughs) din she was causing. The barber grew irate. The incessant reedy wheezing was driving him to madness. He wondered if snipping her ears could be forgiven if in court if he had a recording of this racket. He decided it could. In his best effort to make it look accidental, the, the barber snipped her ear. A scream filled the shop, and then blood began to spill. Her severed ear tumbled across the tile right into... My <laughs> <bitter friend made. laughs> A bucket smell filled his nose as the hair caught on fire and the creature was sudden. That's a great cliffhanger. I love it. I, love uh, it. I, want, yeah. I can't wait to read book two in this series. To agree about. Steven, is everything all right? You're very violent today. I, I, I was thinking that as I read this one because when I'm working on them myself, I'm not thinking of it. But whenever I see all of my together, I'm like, oh, this, I did turn a lot of these into violence. <laughs> It's fine. It's they were mutilated and then they were mutilated and then peed all over themselves. <laughs> <laughs> he was murdered and then set on fire while celebrating, while celebrating his, his birthday. birthday. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm so sad that we lost Oscar the Grouch. The fact that he's Oscar the Grouch <laughs> in the barbershop. <laughs> yeah, br- there like is a brief a moment. Twist. There is a brief moment where it's Oscar the Grouch and it was great. Oh. I like how his name changed like four times. Like the main character changed like four times. <laughs> it happens. Oh, I it guess was. it was Mama Oscar originally. Yeah, yeah it was. Okay. 
Alex, you're up next. <clears throat> I'm going to try my best. Reginald stared at himself in the mirror and breathed a deep sigh. How did this happen? He wondered to himself. How did it get to this point? Well, you walked into the room and looked at a mirror, his reflection replied. <laughs> Reginald blinked. This was new. Or was it? Something tickled at the back of his hippocampus. Reginald didn't laugh, for his body was ready. <laughs> within, his, <laughs> within his mind, he knew what he had to do. Pirate Mother 3 and show himself how good it was. <laughs> Reggie started to download Mother 3 when the police broke through the door. You're under arrest for stealing a game that didn't even release here. Reggie pulled out his blaster. He aimed it at the officers. Instant three stars. This is bullshit, he grumbled. <laughs> Those stars are going to be so hard to lose. Oh, well, at least there aren't team lives. Reggie then pulled something from his pocket. It was the Switch Pro. It existed, and Reggie fils had one. The police froze. A crowd gathered. Reggie turned it on. Immediately, a holographic Pikachu had emerged from the glossy surface. Oh, God. I am the Wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pikachu talk. Yeah. No, Percy, yeah, yeah, this yeah, is great. Yeah, yeah. Pikachu. Pikachu, I am the master of your universe now. He boomed. <laughs> you shall all do my bidding, Pika. <laughs> This is what I had been working towards my entire life. I donned my, <laughs> I donned my holographic cult leader robes and kneeled. What is your iridescent bidding, Dark Lord Pikachu? I need more unicorn juice. It keeps me iridescent, Dark Lord Pikachu demanded. A redemption chance. I could not disappoint Dark Lord Pikachu, DLP, a second time. <laughs> Was that unicorn petting zoo still for sale? 10K? I had that, and enough for a snow cone left in the business account. Hmm. And that Emoji. Is the book. <laughs> wow. That happened. Woo! That one that one was that one was a journey. Uh, wow. Yeah. I the love Dark Lord. Cult leader lobes. Dark, Dark Lord Pikachu is great. Uh. Uh, good book. Good Our one. final book. Yeah. Our <laughs> final book for the night is the one started by Thomas. I hope you like your gift. It was a simple blue wrapping paper with a yellow bow with a with a yellow bow. <laughs> it wasn't my birthday, and I hadn't gotten good grades on my report card. The package was lumpy and it smelled faintly oh. of wet meat. Not rotten meat, mind you, just meat that was unusually moist. As I pulled it close to my ear, I swore I heard it ticking. I'd assumed the meat bomb at the, on the Arby's menu was a metaphor, but no, it turned out that it meant it literally. I pulled out the yellow pages and looked up Stan, the demolition man. Stan arrived on the scene from a helicopter, breaking through the ceiling of the Arby's. He goes to handle the meat, turned to me and said, Mustard bomb. Stan tackled me as the bomb went off. Mustard flew everywhere in the Arby's. When it came to, I noticed everything was different. Arby's was now a water burger, and the mustard was now spicy ketchup. I must have teleported to a different world. Everything was better. I had to find Stan. <laughs> he had to be around <laughs> somewhere. I ran through the crowd, turning people around, but none of them could answer my quarry. The bazaar was behind me, and Stan was ahead. I needed to get Stan this letter. I felt bad for taking so long to reply. I heard his girlfriend was pregnant, too. He was just ahead of me, so I chased after him. Why are you chasing me, he yelled. My girlfriend is pregnant, and we <laughs> need to get to the hospital. This letter is more important, I hissed. That baby isn't what you think. <laughs> what do you mean? Let's get going, said the officer. No, no, we can't. This baby is a demon child. Ness closed the dresser drawer. <laughs> I did. Oh, my God. I set that up. I didn't even realize. Good ending. Was... Good ending. <laughs> wow. That's where I thought it was going. Wow. Very good to, I, I did that unintentionally, but I'm very happy that I did. It was the great bazaar is no Thank longer you. ahead. The bazaar is behind. It is. Thank you for bringing it back. I'm so glad that we got to learn more of the story of what was in that dresser drawer when Ness was reading it. We never really got the full story, but this is it. Yeah, it was always, it always, I think it starts in the middle and is just like some middle chapter in that story. Yeah, so now we know. <laughs> now I know what comes before. 
<laughs> now we know why they removed the previous chapters. Yeah, there's there there was a reason. Um, wow, yeah this this was uh, this was fantastic. Thank you all for uh, for being here and contributing to this as always. And uh, again, and I will reiterate this: um, if folks want to to cut this up and do something with this uh, from for the, from the animation scene, uh, feel free. And uh, actually, we had some requests on uh, on either the first or second episode to actually just leave the music out. So we'll do that. So I'll, I'll just make sure Dan just doesn't add music to this. So if folks want to do so- stuff with it, they uh, they can. And um, we'll be back to do more. This is a this is an April Fool's joke that's gone very well. <laughs> so <laughs> <by> all. <laughs> Our April Fool's video for for uh, next year will be broken picture phone. <laughs> a- April Fool's Day is just really like trying out experimental ideas that you know are going to be successful and you just want confirmation that it really is. <laughs> <laughs> yep. for, well, for next April Fool's Day, we just have to keep, we have to remove another word. So instead of broken phone, it'll just be phone. Phone. Broken. Well, I'll just broken. have a conference call. Steven's phone number is one <laughs> Oh, God, cut the video. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>